everyone. I'm delighted to be joined today by one of our amazing A-level alumni learners, Ant Jackson. Now, creative copywriter Ant has been responsible for some amazing creative concepts during her career, including one of the most recognisable taglines in UK retail. So without further ado, welcome and thank you very much for joining us today. Do you mind introducing yourself um, a bit more for me, please, and explaining your role in a bit more detail? Yeah, no problem, Sarah. Um, thanks for having me. So yeah, I'm Ant Jackson. Um, I'm a senior creative copywriter. Um, I've been in the advertising and marketing industry for about eight years now, um, and I've worked with some of the world's probably most recognisable brands, including Airbnb, Bridgestone, the Olympic Games, Lidl and UEFA, to name a few. Um, my job is essentially to create ideas um, and communicate messages for brands through language and words. Um, so I guess you could say we're problem solvers um, who try and sort of help brands connect with their audiences. Um, at the same time, we're kind of like actors because um, I guess we're the ones who decide what the brand writes or what the brand says, whether that be on social media or on a billboard or on a TV ad. Amazing, incredible. And your journey, I guess, into um, the industry started back with us um, in Cheshire College in 2018 in 2008 when you joined our crew campus and um, to study a level English language psychology and media and um, why did you choose Cheshire College Anne? and did you know then what you wanted to do within your career yeah so I had an idea of what I wanted to do um, I think I was already all, always interested in people and sort of knowing what makes them tick I suppose it's kind of things like why are they so predictable, get unpredictable at the same time? Why do we behave in the ways we do? Why do we bond over football, for example, but fall, fall out over politics? Why do some things make us laugh? Why do some things make us cry? Um, and also what makes them care enough to actually do something, whether that be like signing a petition or starting a movement. Um, so I was already always interested in that sort of thing. Um, so I thought A-levels, um, the ones I took were ones that I was sort of curious about. So you'll probably guess psychology to learn more about people, um, English language uh, to learn about different sort of forms of communication and media studies as well to sort of start, start to get to know that world of production and script writing and directing, um, all which is sort of part of my job role now, I suppose. Um, but Cheshire College, I remember I, I was torn between there in my local sixth form and it, it just seemed like Cheshire College had more vocational opportunities I think and and especially when it came to like looking at the media suite it just felt much more hands-on and more creative and less like I was going to be sort of stuck in school for two years under sort of regimented sort of time scales and that's really not me um as much as I like a bit of routine it's it's nice to sort of be able to I don't know manage your own time a bit better and, and sort of work and meet meet other people I suppose as well Fantastic. And then obviously you were with us for two years and um, leaving in 2010. Um, when you went on to uni, did you study a media degree? Uh, so I did a BA in advertising and marketing. So I was, again, quite torn between going down a media route and go down an advertising and marketing route. But there seemed to be some some overlaps. Um, I almost changed my first year back to media um, and I'm I'm glad I didn't in a way because I'd probably be in a slightly different place to where I am now. Um, but I mean, the worlds, the worlds are so close anyway. I mean, as soon as it's like with what I do, especially marketing is definitely more sort of the business side of things. But as soon as you sort of get into advertising, the next stage is production. So you're working with directors, you're working with photographers, um, you're writing scripts anyway. So it's very similar. Fantastic. And then what did you, what have you gone on to do since university up until now? So after college, um, I did my BA in advertising and marketing um, at the Uni of Bedfordshire. And then I worked as a marketing manager um, for a design company for a year, uh, just outside of London. Um, about After about a year of doing that, I realised that there was a much more fun side to advertising and marketing than I was currently doing. Um, I wanted to be writing the ads, not looking at budgets, basically. And so I applied to a master's um, at Falmouth University, um, spent a year in Cornwall doing their creative advertising course. Um, and there I learned the basics in art direction, which is sort of, I guess, everything visual, um, copywriting, which is what I specialise in now, and then things like Adobe Suite, etc. cetera. Um, after that, I did about six months worth of placements in London um, at a number of different creative agencies. Um, before getting hired um, at one of them as a copywriter. 
fantastic. So um, definitely with those placements as well, I guess they give you have given you an incredible foundation which you've then been able to build upon within that special within your specialism of creative copywriter and I mentioned um, in the introduction that you've been responsible for one of the most recognizable taglines in UK retail can you um, tell us more about that yeah so I spent a number of years at my this is the first agency I worked at actually um, writing TV and radio um, for the supermarket Lidl um, and through doing that, um, I got the opportunity to come up with a number of potential taglines. Um, my boss was actually the, the guy who wrote um, Tesco's Every Little Helps. So I was a bit in awe of his achievements anyway. Um, so I submitted a few options um, thinking they're probably not going to go anywhere. And then he came out of the room the following day and said, yeah, they've, they've, chosen, your, they've chosen your tagline. Um, so yeah, it was big on quality, little on price, which you've probably seen on a carrier bag or definitely on TV. Um, but yeah, it's still a new years later and it's, yeah, quite, quite incredible really. Yeah. It's, it, it, like you say, it is incredible and amazing. And the fact that I think that is, it is, the equivalent of Tesco is every little helps now, isn't it? That is what we know. In terms of getting those taglines, and how does the creative process work for you? What goes into producing something like that? Um, I guess it really depends what the brief is. So I guess what I love about my job is that no day is ever the same. Like every, every day there's a new challenge or a new problem to be solved. Um, and it's your job to communicate a very particular message with your audience in the way that's going to be most effective. So depending on the brief, you might need to write to make someone laugh or act or share, share something. But for Lidl, it was all about getting people to always remember that although it was a low cost supermarket, its quality still outperforms a lot of its competitors. So for a message like that to stick, um, it needs to be simple, it needs to be snappy and, and as sticky as possible. And, and obviously it helps if you hear it a lot because, because then it helps you remember it. Um, I probably wrote about 20 versions of the same message before simplifying it down to its core. Um, but it's effective because it can be understood, I suppose, by anyone of any age um, and having that sort of that constructive a, a lot of the time we look at things like idioms so or catchphrases and things that people will use in everyday language because you're more familiar with those terms so so having those slight tweaks in those words it's more likely to stand out so with big on quality little on price obviously there's that construct of the opposite so it's kind of like you're big and you're little is something that a lot of people remember quite easily there's also a pun in there which also helps um, as much as some people can't stand them a lot of people love them I and love it them just it, there's something <laughs> there's something about them in the brain i think that just makes people kind of go ah see what they did there it's like a little knowing smile that it gives you um which is just an, another nice association to sort of bring to the brand fantastic amazing and in terms of um learning with cheshire college while studying your a levels have there been any skills that you learn with us that have kind of supported you throughout your career journey and to and create those that tagline and the other um, elements of your role that you've done yeah for sure um i think psychology has just taught me to look deeper and and before you get to um the sort of part of the job that i do and there's a massive job in understanding audiences and people their values um what drives them what makes them tick why they act like they do um so I think that's just, a, to be honest, a really important life lesson as well as a career one because it just allows you to understand people better. And I think no matter what industry you work in, that's a vital skill. Um, English language, um, it's communication. So, of course, it's really helps because I work in the um, communications world now. So um, obviously it involved a lot of reading and writing and coursework, um, which is kind of I guess trained me for what I do now to a point. Um, it definitely trains you up for uni with all those sort of dissertations and that sort of thing too. Um, and it's taught me interesting lessons, I think about like, for example, I remember there was a module that we did in English, which um, we, we got to listen to how men and women spoke in, in meetings. And I remember learning that like men would be really direct. So they'd say things like, um, oh, it's um, if it was too warm in the room, they'd go, "Can you turn the can you turn the heating down?" 
Um, whereas a woman will go, oh, it's a bit warm in here, isn't it? And they'd be a lot less direct. And then when it came to um, sort of asserting themselves as well, um, women were more likely to say sorry before they started talking, or they'd say, I think, instead of I know. And it's all these things that I think I've just said it there. Like um, they contribute because we're all conditioned to do it. Um, they contribute to sort of how we act. And I don't think you can necessarily, when you are aware of those things, you can get further because you know what to look out for and you know where society sort of conditioned you to, to act a bit differently. So from that moment on, I was like, I'm never gonna say sorry before I, before I talk. I'm gonna speak like a guy and see how that goes. And it's probably really helped me to be fair. Um, with media, I just I just loved it. It was probably my favorite um, my favorite A level because of the creative element and there was that collaboration to it. Um, and it's probably the the closest thing to what I do now because it involved things like script writing. Um, sometimes we sort of get involved with like writing director treatments. So I remember we um, in I think year two we we created a film um, which I directed as part of a team. Um, so it was really great practice and also the theory side was really interesting because it kind of I guess it gave me a new um, perspective into sort of the world of media and advertising and how that works. Would you have any words of wisdom or advice for current um, learners, whether they're studying an A-level programme or a full-time programme with us, who are looking to break into the um, industry or even those who are creative but not sure how to channel it? Yeah, um, I'd say just follow the things. If you're not sure how to channel it, just follow your passion and, and start. The, the, the hardest thing to do is, is starting. And it's if, if, for example, if someone said, oh, I really want to um, give sort of writing an ad a go or I want to give writing a film or a book a go it's like just start writing don't be critical just let just let that process sort of happen get everything out of your head and onto paper so you can look at it objectively um because we're all I think our worst critics um so a lot of people will go oh yeah I'd love to do it but uh, I don't really have what it takes or yeah I'm not I don't think I've got it in me and of course you do we 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 all sort of grew up the way I like to see life is at one point no matter if you've won a Nobel Prize or if you're the Prime Minister or whatever else like we all grew up basically in a nappy dependent on our mothers from birth so if we if we were all there we can we can all achieve anything um but for advertising in particular um there's I'm part of an organisation called um, Young Creative Council. Um, so you can go onto their website, youngcreativecouncil.com. They've got loads of advice on there about how to get your foot into the industry. There's a number of sort of different people that you can reach out to. There's competition briefs, so you can give, I guess, advertising a go and sort of enter a couple of competitions and awards. There's also a really great um, Twitter um, account called One Minute Briefs, which is kind of a community led um, account, which has grown now to, I think, something like 30,000 members. Um, but every day they, they put out a brief and it could be something like advertise umbrellas or advertise grass or anything random, but it, it, it enables you to practice your lateral thinking. And because it's grown now as well, brands are getting involved. Like yesterday they did something where they did a campaign for WWF where they removed all the animals from a load of brands to show what a world would look like without nature. And these are these are normal people who are coming up with these ideas. They're not people who have been to uni who have practiced advertising for years. They, I think someone who came up with that idea actually works for the NHS. But it just shows that anyone can do it and, and you don't necessarily have to sort of be see yourself as an official creative to be creative and make change happen. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd just say get involved, have a look at um, One Minute Briefs, have a look at Young Creative Council, and also, of course, reach out to me um, if you want any advice as well. Fantastic, and we'll pop the um, links to both those in um, the post as well for people to find. In terms of what's next for you, Anne, um, I'm interested to learn, have you been able to continue working during, obviously, this period of lockdown, what your next projects are? Yeah, so it's been it's been a different experience for sure. So I'm um, obviously working from home and I have been um, I feel very lucky to be working from home because I think the industry did get hit quite hard, um, hard at the sort of start of I think March of last year. Um, I guess it's one of those things that when the world went into panic, of course, everyone else panics too. Um, but it's, it's sort of become um, 
a lot smoother now. I think the fact that everything's opening up again, people are getting very excited. Um, I'm looking forward to actually being in a room with people to work with them again, because it's, I think there's something about, especially because a lot of what we do is all about collaboration. Working through a screen can only be so collaborative. We can't throw things up on the wall or sort of draw all over the whiteboard or anything like that. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm an agency at the moment called Wonderman Thompson. Um, we've got a number of really sort of big, exciting clients who are looking to, I guess, do some some really exciting work next year. Um, my own sort of goals, I, I do a lot of work in the diversity space, which I absolutely love doing. Because um, I think, I guess, as advertisers, we're, we speak to a lot of people and have got a lot more influence than we think. Um, and I think we've got um, an opportunity to be able to really sort of help shape society for the better. Um, so I love being involved in projects where we can actually sort of push society forward and make some positive change because you, you know what, the world's still full of problems. All you've got to do is kind of look on the news and see what's happening in America and you know, sort of like thinking about sort of how can we counteract climate change and those sort of things. How can we make people make those small changes that are going to make is going to make our world better for all of us, I suppose. So that's the sort of thing um, I'd like to sort of focus on in the future. Fantastic, that's brilliant and thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it um, and good luck with all the um, future projects. Uh, thanks very much.